Joining me now is Andy Gray from Doha. Thanks for joining us, Andy. Um, Liverpool, two wins away from their first league title for 30 years. They've, um, they've got Everton and Crystal Palace, Everton away. How many games do you think it will take them? Uh, that depends, Gary, on Man City, really. I mean, we, have, we mustn't forget City started off on Wednesday night against, uh, against Arsenal. Should Arsenal win, or sh then that would mean they could actually win it at Goodison. Now, for an Evertonian, that's unthinkable, right? That's unthinkable. So, Manchester City have to do the business on that Wednesday night so that whatever happens at Goodison and the weekend, they can't win the title there. That would not be acceptable to uh, Evertonians and um, I, it's not acceptable to me. So I think that it's a tough one. You know, I, I don't know what they're going to come back like. We don't know. This is a big question. I've been watching the Bundesliga. Some clubs have come back really good, Gary, uh, like Bayern Munich, who have flown out the traps. They've been terrific. Others have been a bit sloppy, a little bit off the pace. We don't know how these two are going to come back. So it's a tough one. But I expect that within within three games of them starting, and that's Everton Palace away, and I think they're away at Man City on the third one. I think the league will be wrapped up by then. What do you think is going to happen below them? It's a tough one. I think that Chelsea are vulnerable. I think I actually think Leicester will hold on. I hope they do. I hope Leicester hold on. Whatever happens in the courts of arbitration, we'll have to wait and see on Manchester City. But Apart from that, they'll finish second. I don't think there's a doubt. Leicester, I'm hoping they pick up. They were a lot. They've, they've probably been happier with the break than anybody, yeah. because it's given has to get himself together again and galvanise his team. They were looked like they were. Slow, slow. So I hope they stay the pace because I'd like to see them. The vulnerable ones are Chelsea. They've got a really hard run in, difficult run in, and they're they're susceptible. United have the easiest run in of the chasing team. And I include Wolves and Sheffield United in that, Gary, because if Sheffield United beat, beat Aston Villa, as we know, in the first game back, they'll jump above Manchester United into that fifth spot. So we can't count them at all, Chris Wilder's side, who have been magnificent this season. If you were to ask me right now, before I've seen a ball kicked and I don't know what kind of condition everyone's coming back in, who do I think will get fourth? Looking at the run-ins, which I've just glanced over, I think Manchester United might just nick it, you know. Yeah, interesting. Well, talking about Sheffield United, I mean, what a season they have, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but will they get into the Champions League? Uh, let's hear uh, our first with their manager, Chris Wilder. And you're five points off the Champion League spot, that's Chelsea. That's not, that's fantastic. And you play Chelsea, Spurs and Manchester United in your last 10 matches so in a way the champions league could be in your hands if you, if you win the three matches and the hands of chelsea and the hands of wolves and the hands of manchester united as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the hands of leicester yeah, yeah but, but you're playing them all i mean you haven't got to sit back and see what they do you've got you've got an absolute chance here i mean wow sheffield united in the european champions league yeah that would I'm be something I mean, listen, it's, we, we, of course, you've got to, you know, you, you've got to have dreams and you have ambitions. And we've we've got our head down and looked at every game and we've been positive in our approach. And if we've been beaten, we've looked why we have been quickly uh, and talking about the media. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is obviously our reaction to defeat. And I think Phil Jagielka was a was a main voice in 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 our meetings in that that we have to quickly overcome defeat because um, one defeat can quickly turn into two, three, and four, and and all of a sudden you feel you're playing well and you're not getting results. You know, thankfully we've we've really um, adjusted and and, um, and and got ourselves back up and running after defeats, and um, and that's been that's been a, a great attribute that that we have. Had and no doubt we'll need in the next in the next ten games, Gary, because uh, you know I think beyond our wildest dreams, uh, you know we can think that we can uh, we can cruise through the last ten games. There's some brilliant games to be involved in. It's all to play for. We understand that. I mean, for us to be even talking about you know the position and, and what other people are talking about is, is is just incredible. But we feel we deserve deserve to be here the way we've the way we've approached it. The results that we've got, we've took every game. 
on its uh, on on its own uh, merit and um, and try to add to that points total and we'll try we'll try our best to add to the add to the forty three points that we've got already. And it, it is remarkable. I mean, in two thousand and sixteen, when Chris Wilder took over his schoolboy team, um, they were in League One. I mean, it's. It, I, I and a lot of other people thought they'd get relegated this season. Did you think they'd get relegated? If you're no. I thought, they'd, I thought they'd push for Champions League this season. <laughs> <laughs> your, nose, your nose is growing. No, no, honestly, Gary, I thought they would really struggle. I, did, I, re, I thought they would really struggle because Chris gave a great shot in the arm to his players by saying, listen, I'm not going to get too many in here. What I've got, I believe in. What I've got, I like. And uh, what I've got here, I, I think you want to play in the Premier League and you're going to give me everything. And he has, and it's predominantly a British-based team he's had. And it's British coaches. He's brought in a couple of foreigners this season because he had to. But that's OK. But has he surprised me 100%, Gary? Not only him, but his team. And I could not be more pleased for a down-to-earth Brit. A yeah. Brit is actually shaking up the Premier League, not a foreign coach, but a British coach. And isn't it nice to see people like him, like Frank Lampard, like Brendan Rodgers, all batting it out at the top of the league rather than all the British coaches. Well, they're only good in the bottom half of the league. They can't take the big boys and they can't take the best teams. It's so refreshing for me to see British coaches actually doing well. Um, can I just correct you on one thing? Lampard and Wilder are English coaches. The British coaches. <laughs> right. <laughs> Typical of you. I've known you long enough. That's typical of you. They are British coaches. Fine. And okay. With Brendan, we'll call them British and Irish coaches. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, what about the bottom there? Your old club, Aston Villa, have got a game in hand against Sheffield United in the opening day, the opening match, actually, of the resumption. Then you've got Bournemouth just hanging in there with, with uh, uh, Norwich, well, uh, but they're, they're so close, isn't it, with the teams just above Bournemouth in the drop three. Do you think Villa will go down, first of all? Do you know what, Gary? I, I really worry for my old team. I, I mean that. I think the run-in is not an easy one. I think it's 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 a tough run-in. You know, they've got the likes of Chelsea, Wolves, Liverpool, Manchester United and Everton away as a last game. To, oh, no, West Ham away, I think, is a last game. Arsenal in that. So they've got really tough games against teams in the top half of the division. So I think unless they can find form that they didn't have pre-break, yeah. then I really worry for them. I know the likes of John McGinn, that's a plus. I think young yeah. John is going to be back and the rest has been good for him. So he'll be back. But is, it, is that going to be enough to get uh, the victories that they need? I don't know, Gary. I really worry. They have to find a level of form that they haven't shown this year yet. And I, I'm, I'm hoping they can. But again, when I look at the games they have, um, it's a big ask. So, so Norwich are bottom with 21 points, then Villa with a game in hand with 25, Bournemouth 27. But above Bournemouth on that 27 are Watford, West Ham and Brighton are only two points further on. So mm. of those six clubs, you'd put Norwich down, wouldn't you? I think Norwich have gone. Yeah. Norwich have gone. So who um, would you put I, the I worry other... about Villa, as I've said. I worry about Villa. But I think Bournemouth, Watford... West Ham, Brighton are the teams you're pro we're probably talking about. If it was, if we hadn't had the break, I would say Watford are off and running. You know, to beat Liverpool three 0 the way they did, very close to I think the last game they played before the the enforced break showed that they were in the type of form where I think they could get out, and I think they will get out. They've got good experience. Same with West Ham. I think the dangerous one, and I, and I don't know why I say this is Brighton. I, I, I worry that they they could get dragged into it. Bournemouth. I think it's between Villa, Bournemouth and Brighton for the last two spots, Gary. I wouldn't like to place any money in any of them because I really don't know how they're all going to come back. And this is this is something that we've never had to cope with before, this kind of break. Yes. How have teams prepared? Are they ready to go again? We don't know that. We won't know that till Wednesday, then the following weekend. But I think that I think West Ham and Watford will be OK. I think they've got enough experience and enough quality in there. But Brighton... Bournemouth, Villa, I think it'll be two out of the three that go.